Watashi no Nemaiwa Borek-san Jeff Des. And I wish I could do my entire presentation in Japanese. I'm uh, very happy to be here, but I'm even happier that I have my colleague with me so that you will have simultaneous translation, <laughs> or almost. Um, uh, my name again is Jeff Borek. I work in open source for IBM. I've been at IBM for most of my professional career and spent over half my time working in and around open source communities. So I am very pleased today to be joined by my IBM research colleague, Ohara-san. I will ask him to introduce himself, please. Yes, uh, my name is Mori Ohara. Uh, in uh, IBM Research, uh, based in Tokyo. I'm uh, involved in uh, uh, bringing open source innovations to uh, hardware, like uh, IBM still has a hardware like a mainframe, and also uh, enabling hardware innovations to open source communities. Thank you. And our topic today is how to future-proof your OSPO. Uh, quick show of hands, how many work in uh, OSPO in their organization? So about half. Um, it is also my understanding that uh, in Japan, uh, OSPO name is more associated with a centralized group. But um, it is also possible to do an OSPO uh, in a distributed fashion as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and start our conversation and we will get into additional details. And I actually should have interrupted the prior session because there was a question about open AI at the end, and we will also have some news to share. So with that, uh, you saw this, if you were in this room for the prior session, you saw a graphic like this describing OSPO's becoming mainstream. Sometimes when I talk about open source at IBM, I like to say I stand on the shoulders of giants because IBM 30 years ago was a very involved leader in early open source. Uh, a good example of that is in 2000, IBM said, we will invest a billion dollars to enable Linux to be a first class citizen across all IBM hardware and all IBM software will run and be certified either on RHEL or on SUSE. Very progressive for almost 24 years ago now. But in addition, IBM was very active in helping to establish the Apache Foundation, another very important open source community uh, that IBM helped to write some of the original bylaws to ensure that the Apache community would be uh, very important in keeping the web open. And then lastly, IBM had a challenge associated with trying to rewrite its middleware portfolio onto Java and created a large framework for software development for Java and then could have commercialized that framework. But back then, the Java community was highly fragmented with many, many different players, which was good because it provided options. But it also was challenging because um, how do you try and bring unification? And IBM donated all of that software development to form the Eclipse Foundation. Those are just three examples. So OSPOs are one of a phenomenon now that open source has gone from being individually driven to influenced by major companies like IBM and others to helping to create major platform companies like uh, Facebook, like Apple, like um, Netflix, Google, et cetera. All of the hyperscalers could not exist without open source software, if you think about it, because the scale of hyperscaler computing and cloud computing uh, could not be possible if that free software was not a major part of the foundation. 
And now we are in the phase of companies realizing the value of having direct participation. So companies will still consume open source through subscription support from Red Hat or SUSE or others, but companies are realizing that there's benefit to direct participation. However, there are warning signs in all of this good news. You can see that organizations thinking funding for OSPOs um, is going to be in some potential threat because of economic headwinds. So maybe, should I? Please. Okay, so, uh, okay, Nihongo de Cocoa, I know. えっと、いう、あの、悲しい現実がありますので、これからどのようにしてそれをオスポをリバイタライズしていくかといったお話をいたします。And uh, please take as much time as possible because lunch is after this and of course they will stay with us as opposed to leave for lunch. So we have uh, extra time. Just kidding. So warning signs are there in the economy as you can see Business and academic economists estimate the probability of recession is 50-50, uh, coin toss. So maybe in 24 we have recession, maybe we don't. <clears throat> and also, oh, I'm sorry, please. America no, ano, kizai jokyo wa, dochiraka teito negative to yuka, ma, ma, goju percento no, teito de, eto, keiki kotai ni haru nai ka to, yufu ni yuare teimasu. And the conference board that tracks uh, uh, growth of U.S. economy is basically saying uh, it will be essentially flat. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, maybe you can you can yes. quick. Yeah. And also, Sangyo Shingi Kai dewa. Hi. Eto, lainen no zenhan ni wa ano recession, karui recession mo aru to yuarete ite eto. 年間のGDPも0.8%に過ぎないというふうに予測しています。And lastly, uh, research is showing that wage stag uh, growth is stagnating, uh, pandemic savings are being depleted, so certainly troubling headwinds. はい、これもあまり良くないニュースなんですけども、賃金上昇も非常に小幅になって、貯蓄の減少が予想されています。so what should you do to future-proof your OSPO? Uh, first, a misstep to avoid is not uh, realizing what your why is. And there is a, a thought leader named Simon Sinek who uh, several years ago wrote and did a TED talk on concept of starting with why, how great leaders inspire everyone to take action. はい。えっと、これはまあまずなぜから始めようという非常にサイモンシネックっていう有名な方のえっと提言があります。Two main ways to influence and position your OSPO within your organization and drive its success. You can either try to uh, negatively influence through manipulation or you can try to provide inspiration and inspiration is much more powerful. まあ、リーダーシップの一般的なあの、メソドロジーでもあるんですけども、インスパイアから始めるというのは非常に効果的だとサイマンは言っています。why uh, we work determines how well we work. So my number one misstep to avoid is ensure your team and your organization understand why you're doing your OSPO. Because we all know in this room why, but when you go back to your organization, you have to ensure that leadership understands the value. Because the reason your leadership 
will support you is that if they have a better understanding of why this is important. はいまあ、皆様はですね、なぜオスポが必要かというのはもちろんご存知だと思うんですけども、えー、と皆様の会社、組織にお借りになったときに、えー、ご自身のリーダーシップチーム、もしくはメンバーの方々がなぜオスポかということを、えー、十分に理解するというところが、まず最初のスターティングポイントかなというふうに思います。So the second misstep to avoid is not balancing your OSPO value. Because the,、um, there are many reasons for establishing an OSPO.、Uh, are you going to do an OSPO because you're excited about、uh, doubling your consumption of open source? Or are you really starting an OSPO because you realize you need to contribute back more effectively? What is the right balance for your organization and their? Uh, reasons to fund your initiative. はい、まあ、何事にもバランスが重要だということかと思うんですけども、オープンソースにもそれを使うと、コンシュームするという、えー、目的と、それからオープンソースに貢献するという目的と、両方あると思います。その辺のバランスが重要であると。Uh, the next balance point is the engineering value of open source. So, an example. If you looked at the average enterprise application only five or seven years ago, it would maybe have about 50 open source components under the covers as part of the foundation. Today, the average enterprise application has over 500. It's a 10x increase. So that brings big engineering value through reuse. But you also have to make sure that the business understands that value from an efficiency perspective. 今、オープンソースが非常にあの実際の製品で使われている個数,数,数は非常に10倍ぐらいに最近増えてますけども、まあ、それによって既存のテクノロジーをリユースできるという非常に、まあ、ビジあエンジニアリング的な価値があるわけですけども、それとビジネス的な価値とのバランスが重要だと。The community value versus the company value. So, what do we mean by this?、Um, of course, the company wants to see value, but if you want your company to have a good relationship with the community, the community needs to see the value you're bringing as well through your OSPO. And maybe that's through having you send some people to events like this. But it's also having your company realize that it is in their best interest to help the community. If your company is only wanting to、um, solve their unique problem, it is more difficult to get community cooperation. So by helping, you get better balance and better support. Hi. えーとまあ、コミュニティとそれからビジネスのドライブする、まあ、会社というのバランスになりますけども、まあ、やはりギブアンドテイクになりますから、まあ、何を、えーとまあ、コミュニティにバックできるかさ,さらにコミュニティから何を得ることができるか、まあ、そのバランスは非常に重要です。And we touched upon this before, but again, centralized versus distributed organization. There's no one perfect solution for how you structure your OSPO. So you have to consider your organization and the most important communities your company wants to engage in. That will help you decide if you can be more effective with a centralized versus distributed approach. オスポと言いますと、まあ、セントラライズ、集中型の組織というふうに捉えられることも多いんですけども、まあ、オープンソースそのものが、えー、と分散的な活動によって成り立っているということもありますし、その集中型、それから分散型とのバランス、まあ、トレードオフが考えられると思います。So, misstep number three,、uh, not managing all of the risks. Of open source use. So, historically, for the last decade, 
much of the focus has been on the legal risk. What does the license say that you can and cannot do with the code that you are taking? And what obligations does that bring? And that remains a very important risk. That's only one of the top three focuses. もちろんオープンソースを使うことによるリスクをどうマネージするかどう管理するかというのも非常に重要ですし、まあ、最も最初に考えられてたものはリーガルリスク法的なリスクですねそのライセンスが何を許して何を許してないのかそれを十分理解してマネージする必要があります。I like the graphic too. I don't think this is on Mount Fuji, but、um, I'm not spending my weekend、uh, doing this type of climbing. The second risk is、uh, security risk.、Um, what、uh, CVEs, and CVE stands for critical vulnerability or exposure, what CVEs are in the software that you are consuming?、Um, do you know? And if you know, what will you do about it? はい、セキュリティリスクもその次に重要なポイントになります。特にそのソフトウェア、使用とする、使用するソフトウェアがの共通脆弱性因子が何であるかということを認識している必要があります。And lastly, and this is one that can be easy to miss, but it's what is the governance risk? Who controls the project? And Uh, what is the future of project control? Because it is okay for a new project, say, for example,、um, uh, any new project might come into open source controlled by a single company or even a single individual. But it is not wise to adopt that software unless. It is under open governance because under open governance, there's a shared understanding of how things will evolve. And certainly, an example of this challenge is the recent relicensing done by some startups where they begin with an open source license and they achieve a certain level of adoption and then they get pressure from their venture capital. To change their license to increase、uh, their bottom line. はい、最近注目されているのが、えーと、リスクの一つとして注目されているのはガバナンスリスクになります。コミュニティでえで、ー、作られるものですから、その誰がその成果物、ソフトウェアをコントロールしているのかというのを非常に注意する必要があります。まあ、あの一時ソフトウェアある程度の長い期間を使うものですからそのコピーライトを持っている会社によってライセンスが変わってしまうということがあって、まあ、それは非常に大きなリスクになりますので、まあ、そのコミュニティ全体がオープンな形でマネージしているガバナンスしているというところが重要なポイントになります。Um, number four is... Alignment with developer advocacy. A quick、uh, show of hands again. How many work in an organization that has some type of developer advocacy group? So, about maybe a quarter of our group today. So, for those that maybe are not familiar, I will、uh, provide a point of view from myself on developer advocacy. Developer advocacy is not technical pre sales. Technical pre sales is very important, and every tech company provides that. But the difference is that developer advocate focus should be on trying to help the average developer better understand how your company can support their increase of knowledge. And that is more appealing to a developer. Than just technical pre sales support. And we can talk about that more, but it's important to understand how your organization、uh, defines developer advocacy and how it relates to your OSPO. Hi, Developer Advocacy is a very important point. 
、えー、まあその組織の中でそれをどう定義するか、まあ、特にプリセールスのような活動と違ってそのえコミュニティとえそあえと会社とそれからえ実際のデベロッパーをどうやってつないでいくかとその活動の価値をデベロッパーにいかに理解してもらうかと。いうところがデベロッパーアド,カアドボカシーと普通のプリセールスの活動と違うところというふうに考えています。So, uh, who provides leadership to your developer advocates?、Uh, what do they spend their time on? And how can your OSPO assist them and have good alignment with the overall goals of your company's、uh, policy? And guidance around open source consumption and contribution. はい、えっと、デベロッパーアドバカシーを誰がリードして、まあ、どういうことにその時間を使うかというのは非常に重要です。えっとまあ、オスポーが、えっと、デベロッパーアド,アドバカシーをガイドするということになると思いますけど、それをちゃんとエグゼクティブの方々が理解しているということが重要になります。And another important thing to consider is、um, your developer advocates. They are largely outward focused, but your own software developers need to transform. They need to better understand what's happening out in open source communities to help them、uh, improve the way they support internal development at your company. So, some fraction of time of your developer advocates can be used to support your internal work, and that helps improve the value perception of your OSPO. はい、えっと、OSPO とそれからデベロッパーアドボカシーの活動は主に社外のデベロッパー、会社の外にいらっしゃるデベロッパーとのリレーションシップに関わることがメインになるわけですけども、えー、まあそういった会社であっても、えー、と社内インターナルなデベロッパーっていうのもいらっしゃいますしそういった方々に対しても、えー、コミュニティとどうやってつないでいくかということをが重要になりますので、えー、とデベロッパーアド,アドボカシーの方も、えー、社内のデベロッパーにも時間を費やす必要があります。So I will actually go off script briefly、okay. and、uh, share an inside story at IBM. So、uh, over 10 years ago, IBM、uh, made significant breakthroughs in AI. But IBM believed back then that that breakthrough was best promoted through a Um, proprietary approach. And that approach was、um, unfortunate. And I won't go into a lot of details, but、uh, it relates to this issue of developer advocacy because five years ago,、uh, we used developer advocacy to re engage inside of IBM. And Helped create an inner source project. So, inner source is like out,、um, open source, but it is done inside your business. And because of that coordination with developer advocacy, we were able to bring、um, focus internally to change the way IBM developed AI software. And we will talk more about the benefits of that. But inner source can be another way developer advocacy and your OSPO can support the business. Okay, so, これはちょっとあの予定なかった話なんですけども<笑>、はい、の IBM の、えー、と AI テクノロジーに関する、えー、の、まあ、開発に関するトピックになりますが、えー、以前はですね、えーとプロプライタリー、オープンソースではなく、プロプライタリーのテクノロジーで、テクノロジーをより開発、あの推進していくというのがいいとされていた時期がありました。ただ、その時はですね、結局その大き、いろんなプロジェクトがフラグメントしてしまって、え
一般的なオープンソースと同じようなリユースエンジニアリングバリュービジネスバリューというのは活用できないという時代が実はありましたでそ,のそれを経てですね、えーまあ、社内のテクノロジーなんですけども社内の中でもオープンソースとしてつまりコミュニティドリブンでかつ、えー、とリユースを推進するとそういう、えー、インナーソースという考え方を取り入れて、えー、現在の AI テクノロジーの進歩に、えー、到達しておりますそういったインナーソースであってもオープン基本的には考え方はオープンソースと同じですからオスポと同じような活動が重要になってきます And we will uh, touch on、uh, AI again at the conclusion of our、uh, talk today. So, the last misstep to avoid is not establishing true executive support. What do we mean by this? Has your organization's approach towards open source changed recently? And I would argue that open source within your organization is like the weather in Tokyo.、Uh, it changes rapidly. <laughs> And so, if your organization's、uh, attitude,、uh, leadership attitude towards open source is not improving, by definition, it is declining. So, you always have to be. Communicating effectively with your leadership to remind them of the value that the organization is getting from your OSPO so that they do not、um, make the mistake of missing the value you're providing. Hi, yeah, yeah, so business operation in Kanshte, executive no support, or legal, you know, he's on Jew, this car, open source, no, Katsde, Katsde, at Tari, Ospo, no Katsdo, no Katsda, at Tari, or executive no Katagata, ni, Gojishin, no Kansha, no executive no Katagata, and Lika, Shte, Takuto, you know, he's on Jew, and I must. So I could go off script again and say, um, Please raise your hands. How many of you like your executive support? But I'm not going to ask that question. <laughs> I have empathy for your executives、um, because、uh, if you've been here today and yesterday, and this is a relatively new conference for you, you may feel overwhelmed. You may feel like you asked for a drink of water and you're getting a fire hose. Open source is complex, but busy executives above you do not have the time to invest in truly understanding what's going on. And so they may make a poor choice simply because they are too busy. So you have to work hard, and it helps if your senior leadership has had past hands on experience because. A busy executive, it's easy to say, oh, open source, that's free software.、Uh, I have to pay attention to the bottom line. Open source is like a large, complex crystal. And it isn't until you pick it up and look at all the facets that you understand just all of the potential and risk of open source. And so that can be a challenge if your executive. Does not have experience hands on. はいあのまあオープンソースっていうのはそんなに、えー、と理解するのはたあの人によっては難しい側面がありますまあエグゼクティブの方々にとっては、えーまあ、安いソフトウェアもしくはただのソフトウェアというふうに考えていらっしゃる方もいらっしゃいますし、えー、実際にそういったエグゼクティブの方々がかつてその実際にオープンソース活動に関わっていたり開発活動に関わっていれば、まあ、そのいろんなディテールをご存知なわけですけどもそうでない場合はオスポの方々がエグゼクティブにいかにそういったオープンソースの成り立ち複雑な仕組みそれと価値を理解していただくようにもらうように努力できるかというところが非常に重要になります。And、um, do they have a、uh, multi year investment view?、Um, 
it can be very challenging if um, your organization, you have not been effective in striking the right balance uh, to avoid um, the challenge of, okay, it's fall plan and what is in next year's budget, right? So ensuring that your leadership understands that it is in their best interest to try and be consistent over time, not jump in one year and say, yes, we have an OSPO, and then the next year say, oh, well, maybe we don't have an OSPO. How many, quick question, how many were in the prior session on uh, open source here in this? Okay, about, not quite half. So the prior speaker talked about FOSS, the contribution back to communities that Microsoft and other companies have made contributions to. And that's really good, right? Open source maintainers work hard. However, I have seen some organizations promote that so strongly that then their leadership thinks, well, we already have a different contribution program back to the community. You know, we don't need an OSPO to be charitable, right? So um, that's another thing that you just have to be aware of as you consider um, how you position this with your executives. Hi, ma OSPO no katsudo, ma software, open source software no kaiyatsu no katsudo mo aru teido ko jikan ga kakaru mono desu kara, tozen. Nani ka, ano, seihin o kattari, kaisho baishu shitari. というようなその一時の投資で済まないものであります。ですので、まああの会計年普通まあ企業であれば会計年度によって予算を決めるわけですけれども、その会計年度をまたがる複数の年にまたがる投資計画、もしくはビジネスオープンソースに対オスポに関するストラテジーがやポリシーが重要になってきます。So I woke up this morning and saw that the sky was cloudy and it had been raining. But as I was coming to the conference, the sun was out and I was in a great mood. I was so happy to be in Japan. The sky was turning blue. And for this last or near last slide, I brought a picture from my home, Seattle. Um, I hope the last half hour of our discussion has not made you all depressed. <laughs> Because for a half hour, we've been talking about all of the missteps you don't want to do. And yet I want to end on a positive note. So now that you know what not to do, uh, develop a holistic strategy, policy, and operation model for your OSPO. Um, by keeping these things in mind and focusing on the right balance, I believe that you also can have success with your、uh, OSPO initiative. はい、まあ、ここまで非常にある,ある意味そのミスステップつまりどうやってあの間違いを起こすかどうやったらオスポがうまくいかないかというお話、まあ、少しちょっと暗いお話だったわけですけどもここではどうやったらそういった問題を解決できるかという明るい話題に振りたいと思います、まあ、一つは、まあ、先ほどのこの前のトークにもありましたけどオスポあなたのオスポと私のオスポは違いますそれぞれ違う考え方がありますので、まあ、ご自身の会社のオペレーション、開発のオペレーションに合った、まあ、包括的な戦略だったり、方針、運営モデルを、えー、作り出す、えー、取り入れるといったことが重要になります。You have to address compliance, even though it can be challenging at times, and you have to consider security. Even though it can be overwhelming at times. Because,、um, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, the volume of open source that your company is using is tremendous. And even your own executives don't fully understand. When your executives buy software from other companies to help them run their business, 
that software they're buying is three quarters open source inside the product. So your role in OSPO is vital to your business's success. And it's also vital that you participate in helping to remediate um, the challenges in open source as part of the community. Hi, Eto. もう一つコンプライアンス、セキュリティ、コミュニティというのに対応するということも重要ですし、まあ、これはあの今まで、えー、自社開発、オープンソースとして、えー、開発してきたもの、オープンソースに貢献してきたものも当然こういったあの点を注意する必要はありますけども、例えば、えー、ソフトウェアの会社を買収したというようなとき、そのソフトウェア買収したソフトウェアの会社の製品がやはりオープンソースを非常に多用しているということもこれからは考えられますからそういった買収した製品に対するコンプライアンスセキュリティコミュニティ活動といったところにも対応する必要があります。So I hope with our session、uh, you can go back to your organization and inspire your teams. And、uh, inspire your leadership, but most importantly, inspire yourself.、Uh, because working in this area、uh, is a very important part of your organization's future success. Even though other parts of your team may not fully appreciate the reality of、uh, how impactful open source is on today's software supply chain. まあ、あのこのトークの一番最初でもありましたように、まあ、リーダーシップで一番重要なことの一つはインスパイアさせそのチームだったり、えー、ご自身のリーダーシップチームを、えー、インスパイアさできるかと、まあ、先ほどホワイトから始めようというのはございましたけど、まあ、そういったあ非常にいい、えー、ほほメソドロジーがありますのでぜひ活用していただきたいと思います。Oh, I'm sorry. That's... Thank you. Um, so, in my photo is Mount Rainier, and I like to think of、uh, our Mount Rainier is like your Mount Fuji. It is、uh, far away and yet、uh, nearby. And、uh, I also want to say that I've been very frank with you, and so if、um, we get in trouble, I will take all of the blame because this is my partner who has made communicating this value to you、uh, very、uh, easy to do and understood by everyone. はい、えっとまあ、ここはあのワ,シントンワシントン・シアトルのリニア、うん、マウント・リニアですけども、まあ、これは、えっと、日本ですから、まあ、あの富士山だというふうにあの考えていただければよろしいかなと思います。So,、um, some more good news. So, I was candid with you about IBM's AI journey, where over a decade ago, IBM tried to approach AI in a very proprietary way. And the good news is about five years ago, I went back to that same part of the organization and said to them, hey,、uh, You may want to change this approach and move to a more open strategy. And that has produced good results for IBM. We talked about the inner source.、Uh, just within the last 24 hours, IBM has announced a new AI alliance. And part of the reason for this is that. It's become very confusing in the marketplace. So,、uh, Google is doing AI, Microsoft is doing AI.、Uh, I respect them as good engineers and good competitors. And OpenAI was a startup、um, that proclaimed that they were open, but Then, with ChatGPT, they had such a significant breakthrough that they have pivoted to a strategy that doesn't look as open. So, we have put together a long list of 
organizations to collaborate. It's IBM, Meta, but it's also many universities and many other respected organizations to try and have an alliance around AI that is、uh, foundationally very open. はい、えっと、この AI アライアンスというのは、えっと、もう昨日ですね、昨日の夕方、IBM とメタが共同で、えっと、発表したものです。えっとまあ、オープンソース、非常にもちろん大きなバリュー、特に AI の世界でも大きなバリューを作り上げてきました。えー、Google だったり、まあ、オープン a i がかあの貢献した部分もありますけども、まあ、あの経済的な背景もありあのオープンネスオープンソースの価値が AI の中で少し今変わってきていますそこで、まあえー、約50社、えー、社といっても大学だったり政府機関だったり企業だったり世界の50ぐらいの、えー、そういった団体と共同で AI アライアンスというのを設立しまして、それを昨日発表しております。まあ、これによって、テクノロ AI テクノロジーもよりオープンコミュニティのイノベーションを享受できるようになるというふうに考えています。All right, we are just about out of time, but if you are interested,、uh, we will remain for some questions. Uh, and these slides will be posted within the next hour. So if you did not take every photo you wish to、uh, take,、um, you can get this information. And with that,、uh, I will play、uh, microphone share. Oh, thank you very much.、Yeah. Yes. Question? Oh, oh, thank you very much. I'm,、uh, I'm from China Mobile, the OSPO, and also. We know the risks. And、uh, uh, I would like to introduce this, sir. He's from、uh, China.、Uh, we have o s p o Group in China. This time, we are so glad to meet guys from Japan and also、uh, from world. Well, many thanks for your experience. And I think we should have your experience to let more guys know about it. And then let's work together to fight for o s p o <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, additional question, please. Yep,、um, thank you for good talk. Well, just in case, I'm an OS believer on the lover, and I'm not talking about our executives, but my question is yes, I'm 100% agree with third with why. And of course, we are、um, saying that the contribution is very important for executives, but some executives say、uh, why. Right,、um, because the business is always measured by money. Money means ROI, I is investment, and if investment is zero, it is maximized. So we, have, we don't have to do anything. Someone says, so how to convince them like that? That's a very tough question.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, thank you for asking that.、Um, it is a,、um, a journey. Not a destination. Because even if you this fall convince your executives that the investment for 2024 is reasonable and balanced, you will have to do this all over again 12 months later. So, but a great example that many executives miss is that hey, our products depend on this open source now. If this open source went away,、uh, we would be out of business. And we make money by innovating around the core. And we're much better doing that than if we went and tried to do everything proprietarily. When we want to differentiate, we have to find a way to. Add value atop or around this open core. And to get the core to accept our contributions that enable that value, they have to respect us. They have to appreciate what we are doing. Sometimes it's called、uh, chop wood, carry water. If you show up to the community and say, 
oh, I'm just here to get my pull request in because that enables my features, but good luck with the rest of your project. The community will not be as cooperative. When you help the community, they will most often help you back. And that's part of how you deal with that challenge. I got it, thank you. Can you bring that microphone? Okay. Thank you, Jeff and Moriyoshi. Appreciate it, it was a great talk. Um, and I know you guys spoke a little bit about inner source. Um, and I was just wondering, um, when it comes to that, how maybe some suggestions for everybody about how you may be measuring impact of how inner source is valuable for your companies. You know, we do a lot of advocacy for uh, developers externally, but, you know, when it comes to that RI for our business units and just educating our developers, what ways uh, can you suggest that we can show our impact? Great question. Um, so for example, uh, next level of detail, um, a key part of enabling AI is to have a good natural language processing core. And IBM had a very market leading core over a decade ago. But two things happened. Um, I mentioned the first one, which is IBM decided to try and make that much more proprietary. Number two, IBM reorganized its entire business away from traditional, here's our hardware company, here's our enterprise software company, and here's our services group. Mm. And when they disaggregated the software group and split it up, they created um, business units that were more focused on the way customers were buying things, mm -hmm. but it created tremendous fragmentation. So don't quote me, but <laughs> over six years ago, when I re-engaged with them, we looked inside IBM. How many people are building AI into IBM products six years ago? We had over a dozen NLP stacks. Mm -hmm. You don't need a dozen different NLP stacks. You need one good one. And so helping your leadership see the value of inner source and through collaborative uh, software development internally is part of how you uh, can sell an inner source inside of your organization. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. Please. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm curious about the, about, uh, about the human resources, uh, about talent. What type of talent uh, uh, is a suit for OSP, OSPO? Uh, for example, uh, I think the, uh, the person in the OSPO need to the communication skill. So Hi. Yes, no, that's a very good question. And I'll ask you to translate this answer as well. But part of the challenge is that uh, a logical, where, think of uh, organizational chart for your business, for your business, for your business, they're all different. So where do you put an OSPO in a large matrixed organization? Some say, oh, it's, it's supporting engineering efficiency. It should be in engineering software development. Others think, oh no, it's supporting developer advocacy. It should be in marketing or no, it should be in um, the uh, legal organization because it's all about managing that risk. So the, the challenge becomes an OSPO has to be a mix of complex talent that can collaborate effectively across your organization to help effectively communicate. はい、あのコミュニケーションスキルはもちろん重要になるんですけども、えっと、オスポーが行う活動っていうのは、まあ、技術的な活動だったり、法律的なあライセンスの,あの活動だったり、いろんなあ活動が含まれてますので、まあ、大きなその組織図の中でどこに置いたらいいかというのはなかなか簡単に決められないので、まあ、そういったいろんなスキルを持っている人がコラボレートできるような形態がいいのかなというふうに考えております。
So we are over time, but we'll take one last question and I'll go back to this slide as well. Um, any final questions before? It will not be a question. I just want to thank you for this talk because beyond OSPO, I think it's very inspiring talk about leadership and how to drive change and value in organizations beyond the technical part. The human part is essential and it was a good example of that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, comment. And with that, uh, my colleague O'Hara-san and I will say uh, domo arigato. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference.